It's game two of our quadruple header of Pac-12 tournament basketball here from Las Vegas, Nevada on Blaze Sports. The first round continues with the 5-12 matchup. It's the fifth seed, the 15 and 16 UCLA Bruins against the 12th seed, 13 and 18 Oregon State Beavers. We welcome you to our continuing coverage of the Pac-12 men's basketball tournament here in 2024 on Blaze Sports. Hi everyone, Kevin Malater, Walker Smith to my right. Walker, this is a very interesting matchup because of just the way these two team seasons went. Arguably a down year and a rebuild year for Mick Cronin's team, yet they somehow got the five seed, where there's a couple games back of getting a top four bye. And meanwhile, Oregon State, after a season in which, you know, they rebuilt a lot of players last season, finished 11th, this year somehow got worse down in 12th. Really interesting game for this second game of our day in the 5-12 matchup. Yeah, for UCLA, this is the first time they haven't secured the Pac-12 first round bye in the Pac-12 tournament since 2019. So you're right, it has been a down year for them. But for Oregon State, really coming off what, what occurred a year ago, they improved by two games coming into here, but the conference all around was just a little more competitive. They find themselves towards the bottom of the conference, but UCLA has struggled a whole lot during this season. So they're a team that can be gotten. Oregon State has a little bit of firepower to do it. Yeah, UCLA, you mentioned, you know, there's a team that struggled. Prior to their win against Arizona State last Saturday night, they had dropped five in a row, including just getting trounced at home to their rival Arizona. For Mick Cronin's team, I mean, Mick has caught a lot of fire for how he's handled a lot of these losses. Some have said he's gone too far with throwing some of his players under the bus. But all in all, though, he has still gotten a lot out of this team and a team that is the best defensive team in the entire conference. I mean, since March 10th, they've been 21st in the nation in scoring defense and the best in the Pac-12 throughout the season. They're averaging only 65.6 per, uh, excuse me, 65.6 .6 points per game allowed. They're an extremely talented defensive team, and a lot of that comes from their main man, Adembona, who just won Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. He is an absolute force inside. He's what leads the defense. And, and for Oregon State now, we talked about kind of just the struggles they've had as a pro in the last couple of years. When you look at the roster, it, it doesn't make sense to how this team's in 12th place with the production they've gotten from Jordan Hope and Dexter Acano. Yeah, I mean, it's really been those two that have led it in Jordan Pope. A lot of people might have thought he would have made one of the all pack 12 teams. A little bit of a snub for him. He might have that chip on his shoulder coming into this game. But for Pope and the rest of his team, it's an extremely young team. 78% of this team's points comes from underclassmen, and 68.3 come from true freshmen. This is an extremely young team that is only getting better after having a struggling season. Last year, they come back, they get a couple of games better, show improvement, but still towards the bottom of the conference. The lights have come back on. The start has been introduced to the crowd here at T-Mobile. Let's get you those starters as well. For the fifth seeded UCLA Bruins, Mick Cronin's going for four guard set to open things up with Dylan Andrews, Brandon Williams, Lazarus Stefanovic, he's the Utah transfer, and Sebastian Mack with the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year and Adev Bona rounding things out as the lone forward in the starting five. For the Beavers of Oregon State, two guards, two forwards, and a center. The traditional 2-2-1 two -two mm -hmm. look that seemed to have gone away from the game of college basketball. Jordan Pope and Dexter Connors in the backcourt. The front court is, is Michael Raptai, Tyler Bilodeau, and Shoal Marial will be the center for the Beavers. UCLA in the first half will move from right to left and their iconic home white uniforms with the block UCLA in UCLA blue and a gold trim as well. The Beavers move from left to right in the all black uniforms with orange numbers, the orange block OSU across the front and orange trim along the sides. It's gonna be a ton of fun. Game two, UCLA swept the regular season series between these two sides. But the Beavers are out for revenge. We talked about it off air this morning before the first game, Walker Smith, about it is so tough to beat a team twice in a season, let alone three times. That's the challenge that UCLA is presented with this afternoon. A date with the fourth-seeded Oregon on the line tomorrow. Bruins trying to get back to the quarterfinals. Beavers want another shot at their in-state rivals before they all split their separate ways. Mariel and Bona in the center circle. Our officials this 
afternoon are Michael Irving, Deldrick Carr, and Matthew Ruckison. Ball is in the air, Bono wins the tip, and we are underway here in game two of the first round of the 2024 Pac-12 Men's Basketball Tournament. Andrews controls it, gives it off to his left on the wing for Stefanovic. Immediately down low on the left block for Bono, working against Mariel. Bona backs in, using the size to his advantage. Tough angled shot, the runner no good. The rebound for Bilodeau of the Beavers. Oregon State, the team that's averaging 69 points a game, sees Jordan Pope run the point, angling left, bounces. Bilodeau thought about it too strong. Bilodeau for the rebound, no, he gets called for the offensive foul. Sebastian Mack drew it for UCLA. It's a great first defensive possession from UCLA. And just like we talked about in coming into this game, this is a strong defensive team. They stay home. They know how to stay in front of their of their man, and they're just really able to force turnovers and force bad shots, and they had a great first possession there. Andrews, a chest pass over to Sebastian Mack, the freshman. Bona comes to go to at the top. Guarded by Marial, blows by Marial and throws it down with two hands to open the scoring in this one. 2-0 Bruins with 18.56 left in the first half. That's going to be a matchup to watch. Can, how much can Marial take from Bona? Bona, one of the best centers in the conference. Some would say the best defensive center in the conference, and Marial is going to have a lot of work for him. Average 12 and a half this season, Bona did. Step back, mid-range jumper on the right side is good for Jordan Pope to tie the game with 18.34 to play. And that's going to be the story for Oregon State. Jordan Pope has to have a good game for them to stand a chance against this UCLA side. Andrews around the bonus screen at the top. Goes back around the semicircle. Andrews, a step back, right wing. Thought about a three, gave it off to Mack in the right corner. 15 to shoot as the Bruins will slow it down offensively. Back to Mack, working on the wing, driving through the paint. Looks for some help. Try to find the cutting Brandon Williams. And Billadope was able to pick the pocket there and take it the other way. Here's Pope for UCLA, guarded by Bona, picks up a Bilodeau screen. That was a mismatch for sure. Pope, a chest pass to the corner now for Ratai. Ratai working the baseline along the right side, puts one up, jump ball. As a massive collision there as Stefanovic goes down on the ground right underneath the Oregon State basket and is still slow to get up. Stefanovic holding his inner thigh there, might have gotten kicked right around there on the way down and Pope, excuse me, hit the floor hard. I mean, he went down and a loud bang was heard, so hopefully he's okay and didn't hit his head. Possession arrow gives the ball to the Beavers. 17.56 in the first half in a 2-2 game. Rot side inbound it underneath the basket on the left side of the baseline. Bounces it in to Kano on the right side. Back out to the right wing now. Kano got it back from Bilodeau. 10 to shoot, Nakano puts it on the deck. Flings it over to the top now for Pope. Five on the shot clock, Pope working against. Step back three on the way, that's no good. Bilodeau comes flying in for the board. The put back over, Bonas off the window and in. 4-2, Beavers get their first lead of the game with 17-33 left in the first. Bilodeau, just a really efficient scorer inside. Shoots 52% from the field on the season and averages close to 15 a game. Bona working off the block against Marial. Kicks it back, yeah. Plays pitch and catch with Dylan Andrews, and Bona got it back along the baseline. Bona wants the drive, 10 to shoot, and he kicks it away. Here comes Jordan Pope for Oregon State, and he'll slow it down and wait for numbers. Flips it over to Kano at the top. Fakes, drives it to the elbow. Kiss it into the corner now. A three on the way is good. Tyler Bilodeau from downtown makes it 7-2. Beavers with 17 flat. He's also a 34% shooter from downtown, so not the best percentage, but he can stroke it from out there. Bilodeau has five with the team's seven points so far. And that is the Beaver advantage. Mack to Bona at the top. Working against Marial, gave it off to Stefanovic. Pulls up top of the key for three. Rattles around, no good. And Marial comes flying in with the loose rock. But he couldn't handle it as he went to the deck. In the corner now, Mack at three. That's too long. And the rebound there for Williams of UCLA. And he'll slow it down by getting it back out to the top for Dylan Andrews. 14 on the shot clock. Andrews gets it back from Stefanovic and works his way towards the right side of the paint. Pulls up for two, and it's good. Seven to four. Bruins still trail, but there's Dylan Andrews getting in on the action for the first time this evening. That, break, that broke a quick two-and-a-half-minute scoring drought for UCLA. 16.05 to play in the opening stanza. Akano on the right wing, guarded closely by Sebastian Mack. A chest pass to the free throw line was not handled properly by Marial, and Mack has it for UCLA. Flips it over to Brandon Williams. Williams hesitates, accelerates towards the cup, and lays it off the window. 
7-6, Bruins cut the deficit to one with 15.45 left. A really nice crossover from the 6-7 guard slash forward. Really got it, went to his right, crossed over to his left, really fooled the defender. Williams scored just one point Saturday night against Arizona State. Here's Pope, meanwhile, on the other end, along the right wing. Gave it off to Ratsai. Ratsai lobs it into the free throw line. An extra pass. Mariel couldn't handle it from Bilodeau. Bona comes away with it for UCLA. 2 on 1. Bono, the Euro step through contact, and a foul is called. And that'll take us to our first timeout of the game. Beavers shooting well out the gates. Leading 7 to 6 with 15 20 left. You're listening to the 2024 Pac 12 Men's Basketball Tournament on Blaze Sports. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NOL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of rappers like Jesse and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-pop on blazeradioonline.com on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. My name is Jasmine, and I'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing Versus Everyone. I'm Edward Neiman, host of Boxing vs. Everyone. Tune in Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com for the latest boxing analysis, news, updates, and more. Lights, camera, action. Whether you're a Broadway pro or a beginner, join us for Broadway 101 every Monday at 12 p.m. to hear some musical hits. Anthony Scarmack and Anna Olp break down a new production every week with music from the stage and facts about the musical's origin and journey. Find us on blazeradioonline.com or our Instagram at Broadway 101 Radio to see what's happening in the wings for our next show. 15-20 left here in the first half. 7-6 Oregon State on top. Cap Milaner, Walker Smith, and Walker. This Oregon State team, a team that, you know, Average the second fewest points in the conference coming into this ball game so far. Lead UCLA by one on three of five shooting from the floor. Yeah, and they've really just been able to match blow for blow with UCLA in this first five minute stretch. Both teams shooting about 50%. Oregon State three for five from the floor with a three pointer. UCLA three for six at 50%, 0 for one from downtown. Both teams with two turnovers, both teams with two steals, pretty even on rebounds. It's just been a pretty kind of feeling each other out here early in this game. But what I've really noticed is how kind of dominant UCLA is able to be inside, especially on the defensive end. Mariel is going to have to toughen up throughout this game if Oregon State wants to come out with this one. Yeah, he already has one turnover and a errant bounce pass mm -hmm. go against him. Meanwhile, at the other end, Bilodeau committed the foul just before the timeout, so Adem Bona is going to the line for two free throws. Bona, flick of the wrist is good to tie the game. He is so good from the line, at least for someone his size, just under 70% from the charity stripe for the 6'10 out of Ni Nigeria. Yeah, I mean, he, he really is just what makes this team go. A team that's really struggled a lot in scoring. They have that rock in Bona down low. Or they know that he'll come up with three or four blocks a game, two blocks a game maybe, and just be solid defensively and give them that anchor. He made the second one, and it sparks a 6-0 Bruin run over the last minute of play. Meanwhile, a lob inside for Ricardo, who threw it down over Butunjel of UCLA. <laughs> What a fantastic dime on the lob from way out beyond the three-point arch. Throws it up to Akano, who's short, but was able to get up there. 9-8, Beavers back on top the other end. The right elbow jumper for Dylan Andrews is good, and the Bruins re-grab the lead 10-9 with 14.45 left. That's a pretty important early bucket for Andrews. After a big play like that from Oregon State to go down, make a tough jump shot to keep momentum from swinging. 
Makano, after a couple passes, has it on the left wing. Jab steps with his right, drives in with his left. Picks up his dribble, needs an open teammate, 11 to shoot. Bounces it in now, just checking in off the bench is Ibekwe. Ibekwe, work his way against Bona, pump fakes, try to muscle his way to the cup, and he somehow gets an errant shot to fall. Ibekwe gets his first, and the Beaver lead is up to one at 11 to 10 with 14 12 left. I was about to say, that's not going to be a very high percentage look from Ibekwe. He was able to get it through a double team, including Bona. I don't know how often he'll be able to go back to that move. Stavanovic angling right. Gets past the elbow, picks up a bonus screen. Beavers want a moving screen on Bona, no call. And then Bona goes to get it at the right wing, hands it off now. Andrews lobs it inside for Bona, who threw it down, plus the foul. He is a lot to handle down low, and he's coming off, like you said earlier, an incredible game and an efficient game. You know you have a really good big man in Adam Bona. He shoots 58% from the floor. He's coming off a 20-point game on 33 minutes against ASU last weekend, and he's just continuing it here. Being as good as he is, he doesn't force anything inside. He's able to get in the right position for lobs like that or go in and take high-percentage shots. And he had to reach behind him, too, yep. while in midair to be able to catch that ball and twist it back towards the basket to throw it down with two hands. UCLA up by one, bone into the stripe, was two for two his first trip up. Make him three for three, and he gives the Bruins a two-point advance with just under 14 minutes left, 13.52 to be exact. Mick Cronin installs some full court pressure, but not a press, as Andrews will pick up Pope along the baseline. He gets across the timeline and works his way to the right. Got doubled by Andrews and Williams. Flips it in a Ratai on the right wing. 17 to shoot, Ratai a Euro step off the window, you bet. And the foul. Wow. Beautiful Euro step in by Michael, Michael Rata, excuse me, as Stefanovic gets whistled for the foul. That is his first, foul team's first. 10, as Rata went weaving to the basket and hang on here. Now they, they waved off the basket. Yeah, they will call the foul on the floor as Sebastian Mack checks back into the game. So my point about a beautiful move now no longer stands. Well, the Beavers will have it. Fresh 20 under their basket they're shooting on. It'll be right to inbound. Gives it off to Pope in the right corner. Guarded by Mack, tries to work baseline, and Mack gets called for the reach-in. Second foul for the Bruins in just about 10 seconds of play. They've been pretty clean up until this point. Those are the first two team fouls. Beavers once again under the state of their own basket. Christian Wright, who just checked in to inbound. Lofts it in for Ratai on the right wing. And a chest passed over to Pope, set up the offense. A fresh 20 for the Beavers. Pope weaving just inside the free throw line, puts one up, no good. A Beckway got a hand on it, but wasn't able to secure it. Bono was, though, for UCLA. Bruins up by two of 13, 19 left. Mack a little hesitation, and then he accelerates his way through the paint, kicks it out to the right corner. McLennan just checked in. A step back idea was taken, but not shot as he gets it over to Bona, who spins her off the Beckway and throws it off the window and in. It's just incredible footwork for Bona, he gets inside, goes, brings it in with his right hand, and then just spins around the defender using his body, almost a swim move, but not really a swim move on the spin, and great finish. Bruins up by four, Ratai gives it a ride from the top, no good off the backboard. Loose ball on the ground, it'll be Stefanovic and Abekwe who gets tied up for it. Possession arrow gives UCLA the ball. And another empty possession here for Oregon State. Meanwhile, on the other end, UCLA's made five of their last five. Yeah, and they've just started to be really efficient, and they've figured out where their money's going to be made today. It's going to be inside. It's going to be with the likes of Bona. It's going to be with driving kicks. Bona is just dominating right now inside, and OSU just is not able to stop them. Josiah Lake will check in in place of Jordan Pope, so he gets a breather for the first time. Lake, the freshman out of Oklahoma. On the other end now, here's Andrews at the top. Being guarded by the newly checked in Josiah Lake, the second. Couple of passes now, see Stefanovic get on the left wing, over to the elbow now, back on out to the right wing. McLennan faked the three, drives, pulls up from the right elbow, and his shot is short. Lake got his hand in there, McLennan got his own though, they battle on the baseline. Who's got it? UCLA ball, as they're gonna give 
Lake, the last touch there for Oregon State along the opposite baseline. And a fresh 20 up here for Mick Cronin's offense. UCLA, they're doing a really good job of crashing the boards early. In this early stage of the game, they lead 62 in rebounds with three offensive boards. McLennan faked the right wing three, pulls up for a long two from the right side, no good. Williams flies in for the rebound, kicks out right wing three on the way is good. Dylan Andrews tickles the twine and makes it an 18-11 UCLA lead with 12 minutes to go. He may shoot under 30% on the season, but that's a really good shot, and when you're that wide open, you got to make it. Andrews already has seven for the Bruins. Lake the second, hounded there by number two in white. That's Dylan Andrews. Couple of passes here, Connell on the left wing, get it. Goes towards his right, top of the circle. Give it off to a Beckway. A chest pass to the right wing now for Christian Wright. Gets to the free throw line, pulls up. His shot's too strong. Stefanovic snags it for UCLA. Bruins with a little bit of pep in their step. Andrews on the left wing, spins away from Akano. Takes it back on out now, and he'll get it back after McClendon thought about a right wing three. 15 to shoot, Bona at the top, gave it back to Andrews, driving for the left side of the lane, kicks it out. Right wing three on the way, that's short, and the rebound is for Akano. Williams shot it for UCLA. Bruins need a point, or Beavers need a point, excuse me, they haven't scored in over three minutes. 18-11, UCLA on top with 11 minutes to go. Christian Wright has it, Goes towards the left corner now for Lake. Down inside for a Beckway, and Bona comes in and swats it away and gets the ball. But then he immediately threw it away. He was trying to find Stefanovic, who was pulling away. At the other end now, a catch and shoot three from the left corner is short out of the hand of Josiah Lake, the second. And Andrews collects the loose change for the Bruins and will slow things down. Try and catch your breath a little bit. It's been some quick basketball the past couple of minutes. And Bona dribbles it off his right out foot bounds. out of bounds to Oregon State, and that'll take Down us to the second media timeout. Of this ball game, Bruins on a run, 8-0 over the last three yeah, minutes and 16 Jackson seconds. They lead 18-11 with 10:35 left. Goes into the 2024 Pac-12 Men's Basketball Tournament on Blaze Sports. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8:30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest and the fastest-growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop, a show featuring trending K-Pop songs with prominent artists like BTS, rappers like Jesse, and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-Pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-Pop on blazeradioonline.com on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. My name is Jasmine, and I'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing vs. Everyone. I'm Edward Neiman, host of Boxing vs. Everyone. Tune in Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com for the latest boxing analysis, news, updates, and more. Lights, camera, action. Whether you're a Broadway pro or a beginner. Join us for Broadway 101 every Monday at 12 p.m. to hear some musical hits. Anthony Scarmack and Anna Olp break down a new production every week with music from the stage and fact. 10.35 remains in the first half and the 5.12 here in the first round. Capulator, Walker, Smith, UCLA on top 18 to 11. And Walker, Oregon State's going to get the basketball to start this next sequence of play here. And they haven't really gotten anything going offensively in that second sequence there. Mick Cronin's defense doing a nice job. They've held the Beavers to about a point in the early last four minutes of play. Yeah, you highlighted it in pregame. And they, UCLA just does a great job standing up defensively. It all starts down low, but these small guards, they're kind of big, a little lengthy guards are able to kind of stop players like Jordan Pope and Econo from really getting going, and they've done a really great job just staying in front, forcing bad shots, and keeping Oregon State at bay. So, UCLA, who struggled to start things off, have gone on an 8-0 run here 
over the last three minutes and 18 seconds to take a seven point lead, their largest lead of the half in the game so far. Yeah, and I mean, it's just been, they kind of just found their way into their offense after a couple of minutes of fielding each other out. They realize what works. It's banging bodies down low, giving it to Bona, and driving and kicking out for your shooters. Beavers to inbound, Pope to Ratai and back to Pope with the Bruins and the Song. Some full court pressure again. It's Andrews who picks up Pope on the half court. And Pope's able to break the light pressure and gets it across the timeline. A chest pass over to Akano on the left wing. Guard by Mack. Gets around the Beckway screen and draws a foul. It'll be on Sebastian's Mack. UCLA foul, Tom, Sebastian Mack, second person. It'll be his second and the team's third foul. And McLennan will check in for Mack, who now goes and takes a seat with two fouls early on. Yeah, you just got to take the seat there. Ten minutes, two fouls. McCronin taking no chances, especially given he kind of he likes to keep his bench pretty short in these situations. Right, we'll run it here for Oregon State. Beavers down by seven, looking for a basket. They haven't scored in nearly four minutes. Akano on the left wing. Got doubled, gave it off now. Couple of passes now, see right, get it back on the right wing. Into the corner now it goes for Pope. Fake left, went right, bounces it over, a catch and shoot two on the way is good. Out of the hand of Christian Wright. His foot was on the line on the right wing. And Oregon State finally breaks that scoreless drought, but they still trail by five. Andrews. Gives it over to Buke Tungel at the top of the key, who checked in out of the timeout. A chest pass to the left wing now for Will McLennan. Down inside for Stefanovic. Mid-range jumper on the way, rattles in and out. And Rattai comes down with it for Oregon State. There's Pope on the other end now, weaving his way throughout defenders. Drives it for the paint, gives off to the left block. A Beckway fake left, try to spin off of Nuba's and McClendon's trap along the left block. And McClendon gets whistled for a reach in there. The fourth team foul his first, and Mick Cronin will go deep to his bench and will go to Adai Mara, the freshman out of Spain who's seen very sparse minutes this season, and he's only averaging three points a game. Yeah, and he didn't play against Arizona State, so if anything, he's going to be pretty fresh, but the way Oregon State's playing, they're trying to keep, they keep two big men on the floor at the same time, so Mick Cronin realizes, okay, we need to give Bona a little bit of rest. Nuuba can't play the whole time, so you bring Mara in just to give you the size for a couple minutes out there on the floor. Pope drove it to the basket, but kicked it back on out. Tennis shoot, sidestep for a right wing three, too strong, and it bounces off the top of the backboard. Out of bounds, UCLA ball with 9-11 to play in the first stanza. Bruins still on top, 18-13. And now we talked about the struggles offensively for Oregon State out of the timeout. UCLA hasn't scored in now nearly three minutes of play. Yeah, and that's just bonus come off the floor and they aren't able to go inside again. When that inside offense isn't there for them, they don't really have the three-point shooting to balance it. Stefanovic lobs it inside for Mara. Good defense there from a Beckway, breaks at the pass. Able to get the loose ball was Andrews in the left wing. Gets it back from Mara. Now Andrews lobs it in for Mara to throw it down with two hands. A third alley-oop of this first half for the Bruin offense, and that breaks their scoreless bid. 20 to 13, they're on top with 8.40 left. And when you're 7-3, you only have to jump about an inch off the ground to catch the oop. <laughs> There's a Beckway at the top of the key on the other end. Goes to his right for Christian Wright. Worked his way back up before he skips it inside for Ratai. Working against Butun Gel, got doubled. Ratai bounces off the contact and the fading away jumper is pure. It is 20 to 15, Bruins still on top with 8.17 left. It's gonna be those types of shots that Oregon State's really gonna to have to knock down consistently in a game like today. It's those tough shots from the mid-range, even outside the Pope three-pointer we saw him miss earlier. Yuktun Gel thought about a right corner three and he throws it into the backcourt. Stefanovic will go and track it down and there's a backcourt violation. Back court violation. And another turnover for UCLA, their fifth already in this ball game, a team that's normally pretty clean offensively, struggling to keep offensive possessions and keep the basketball. Yeah, they only average 10 turnovers, about a little under 11 turnovers a game, but they just struggled to kind of hold on to the ball, and it's kind of kept Oregon State in this one. Oregon State hasn't done much offense, but they're hanging around. Just under eight minutes to play in the first half. UCLA leads by five. We'll step aside for a moment here on Blaze Sports. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week. Hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. 
the fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop, a show featuring trending K-Pop songs with prominent artists like BTS, rappers like Jesse, and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-Pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-Pop on blazeradioonline.com on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. My name is Jasmine, and I'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing vs. Everyone. I'm Edward Neiman, host of Boxing vs. Everyone. Tune in Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com for the latest boxing analysis, news, updates, and more. Lights, camera, action. Whether you're a Broadway pro or a beginner, join us for Broadway 101 every Monday at 12 p.m. to hear some musical hits. Anthony Scarmack and Anna Olp break down a new production every week with music from the stage and facts about the musical's origin and journey. Find us on blazeradioonline.com or our Instagram at Broadway 101 Radio to see what's happening in the wings for our next show. Do you get made fun of for your grandpa music taste? Do you shop vintage? Have you ever been called an old soul? Or maybe you just want some new artists to listen to. If so, check out our show. It's called Can You Dig It? The show where we talk old and new artists alike in the release. 7.59 to play in the first half. UCLA the five seed. And a close one right now with the 12th seed Oregon State Beavers, 20 to 15 Bruins on top. Cavalier Walker Smith here for Blaze Sports Game 2 of our quadruple header. Walker, this is, I think, a lot different than people were anticipating just based off how the regular season meetings went between these two yeah. sides. UCLA is struggling right now, and Oregon State's taking full advantage of it as play is back underway here. As Wright will inbound to Ratai and get it right back. Over to Josiah Lake now. Nearly slipped along the right wing before he chest passes it over now to Pope. Pope picks up the rot tie screen, drives to the left side of the line, step backs, weaves his way through traffic, off the window and one! Jordan Pope ducked and dodged. Dylan Andrews, he faked a step back, ducked, dodged, went under, flipped one off the window and it bounces in. And just like that, Pope and the Beavers have a chance to make this a two point game. I mean, that's what Pope does. He's so shifty and so quick inside. Gets him up on the pump fake right there at that left and elbow goes. and just saw him go Number up. Three. You lean and forward one. into the contact, fold it off the glass, and you get the end one. Picture perfect from the guard. So Andrews with whistles for his first. That is the Bruins' fifth foul. Bruins fans trying to distract Pope, but it won't matter as he tickles the twine with the shot and cuts the deficit now down to two. 2018 UCLA on top, 747 left here in the first half. Akano will check back in and rejoin in place of Wright. A little bit of a half press from Oregon State. Andrews to Spivic, down low now to the right side for McLennan and they swing it back on out for the top now. Andrews slowed things down, stepping off. That's Rottai working for the the defensive player of the year in the Pac-12 secures the defensive board. On the other end now, here comes Andrews. Lobs in for Mara just off the left block. Mara backs his way and spins off Rottai and his floater goes. 22-18, Bruins on top with 6.50 left here in the first. Doesn't play a lot of minutes, but his size has been a real advantage in this one. Already has four. Stefanovic will guard. Josiah Lake before Kano gets at the top. Pope comes and gets at the top of the circle on the free throw line. Pulls up for a jump shot too short. And McLennan comes flying in for the loose ball. He flips it up. Couple of passes down low for Bona, who had to catch it and reset things. And now he had his pocket pick there. Nice job there from Jordan Pope, or excuse me, Josiah Lake, and he draws the foul. Yeah, Laser Stefanovic 
brought him back, kind of tripped him up as he was trying to go in transition. Could have, would have been almost a take foul in the NBA, trying to stop the break. But just an un, really uncharacteristic turnover from Bona down low. Couldn't find an outlet pass anywhere. Checking up for the bronze, 27, Jan Vide. Jan Vide will check in for the first time. The freshman out of Slovenia. He averaged just under two points a game in the regular season. Another player who doesn't really see a lot of time in the regular season getting some minutes. Only played two against ASU with no stats. Yeah. And he comes in in a crucial four-point spot here. Akano at the top, guarded there by Mara. Definitely a height advantage there for the Bruin defender. Rata in the left wing guard by Bona, back to Kano. Fakes, blows by Mara, gives it off to Rui. Beckway off the window, it rolls in and out. He got his own though, one on two, a Beckway goes up and under and lays it in. It's a two point Casey game Beckway. as Casey 87, a really, bit, a, lot, a really a lot to handle for the tall skinny man Mara down low. Here's Andrews, gets his way to the top of the key. Pulls up, no good, that was well off. Rebound there for Ratai of Oregon State. That shot never even hit the rim for Ratai. Pope left towards the corner. Vide with good defense there. Mara is able to poke it free. Eight to shoot. Pope now on the right wing. Pulls up for a deep three. Rattles in and out. And the rebound there for Ratai. They fall on the floor. And then McLennan's able to poke it away up to Vide here for UCLA. And they'll slow things down by getting it to McLennan. A chest pass in for Bona off the left block. Working against the Beckway. Kicks it back out. And they give it back, right back to Bona. Wants to go in the air. Bona, no good, but a foul on the play. He got held. His left arm got pinned down behind him. And I'll go to for the line for two. I mean, it really looks like UCLA's offense is almost exclusively going through Bona down low, almost to a fault at this point. They really can't find it from anywhere else. So Bona who is three for three from the line. We'll get an opportunity for two more and a two-point Bruin advantage. Bona, Foul was on Ibekwe, his first, team's fourth. Mona only shooting 69.6% from the free throw line on the season. UCLA also haven't scored in about two and a half minutes. Bona has nine points, make it 10 as he the Tickles the twine with that shot. 23-20, Bruins on top. As Mara will check out in place of Brandon Williams, who had a sub out very early into this game as he had some troubles playing defense. Bona makes himself five for five from the line. And he makes the UCLA lead four with four and a half to play. UCLA, they've had opportunities to pull away from Oregon State, but Oregon State, they're doing a good job just kind of hanging around, and UCLA is doing them a whole lot of favors. Pope at the top of the key, guarded here by Williams. Goes behind the back. Pope tries to go right. He can for Akano. Thought about a right wing three, then goes back left. Guarded by Andrews. Five to shoot. Akano fakes, spins. Off the window, maybe Bona got a piece of it, and that's going to be a shot clock violation as that ball never hit the rim, and the Bruins get a massive turnover there. Yeah, and that was just Bona knowing exactly what Akano was going to do. He saw him go for the pump fake immediately when Akano starts to go down and go up for a finger roll. Bona switches to the other side of the paint and swats it off the glass. Andrews over to Vide at the top. They swing it around out to the left wing. Trying to find it inside, but Andrews is able to slow things down for UCLA after Bona nearly had a pass intercepted. And now Bona tried to drive into the lane, slips and falls. Pope in a one on two, tried to find Josiah Lake the second. A nice play there by Will McLennan inside the paint to break up the pass and deflect it out of bounds. And that'll take us to a timeout. Both teams struggling to score. Bruins haven't made a field goal in three minutes. Beavers haven't scored in two. 24 20 the score here on Blaze Sports. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NOL, and Olympic lacrosse. 
What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop, a show featuring trending K-pop songs with prominent artists like BTS, rappers like Jessie, and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-pop on blazeradioonline.com on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. My name is Jasmine, and I'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing vs. Everyone. I'm Edward Neiman, host of Boxing vs. Everyone. Tune in Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com for the latest boxing analysis, news, updates, and more. Lights, camera, action. Whether you're a Broadway pro or a beginner, join us for Broadway 101 every Monday at 12 p.m. to hear some musical hits. Anthony Scarmack and Anna Olp break down a new production every week with music from the stage and facts about the musical's origin and journey. Find us on blazeradioonline.com or our Instagram at Broadway 101 Radio to see what's happening in the wings for our next show. Do you get made fun of for your grandpa music taste? Do you shop vintage? Have you ever been called an old soul? Or maybe you just want some new artists to listen to. If so, check out our show. It's called Can You Dig It? The show where we talk old and new artists alike. Final three minutes and 43 seconds of this first half between UCLA and Oregon State Bruins leading 24 to 20 in a game in which both offenses have struggled for consistency. You know, they struggle for consistency, but they just really aren't putting shots up. It's possessions ending in sloppy manners. But when you look at their percentages from the floor, neither team is shooting below 40%. UCLA is 9 for 18 at 50%, and Oregon State's 9 for 21 at 43%. So they're shooting at a high percentage. It's just they're not shooting a lot. Beavers to inbound it in the front court. Lake commits a five-second violation. Great defense there by UCLA. He couldn't find an open teammate whatsoever. Mm, and it's plays like that is what I'm talking about. You're getting, you're putting yourself in a position to not even be able to get a shot off. Oregon State, that's their fifth turnover. UCLA also has seven turnovers themselves. Andrews to run it here for UCLA. Gave it off to Williams. McClendon now comes to it on the right wing. Faked right, went left with it. It's Andrews now at the top, working against Lake. Gave it off and got it back. Ten to shoot, feeds it inside, back on out now, left wing three on the way is pure. Will McClendon from downtown gets his first basket of the game and makes it a seven point Bruin advantage, tying their largest lead of the game. He's one of the better shooters off the bench on for the, excuse me, for UCLA and that's a big shot for them to try and swing this momentum. Akano has it at the top, feeds it on over now to the wing for Josiah Lake the second. He's trying to find Rot side, but good defense from Williams down low. Instead, Lake has to give him for Pope, who got doubled. Five seconds now. Lake, jab steps, drives it through the paint. Rot tie with one, lets it go for three, is good. Three. They're going to review it Michael as Rot tie tickles the twine from the right wing and downtown. And it's 27 23 for the moment. Now teams are starting to make threes. You get one on the other end from McClendon. And now Rod Ty pending the, the review on this one. We'll also get a three when the two teams had only made one three apiece through the first 17 minutes of this game. Both teams going back to their huddles. They're reviewing whether Rod Ty was able to get the shot off or not in time. From the naked eye, it looks like he got it off of one. They haven't shown a replay yet here at T-Mobile Arena. Yeah, to me it looked like the ball was in the air when the shot clock expired, so I won't expect this to get overturned, but we'll wait for the official review from on the big board in here at T-Mobile. Officials have already come off the monitor. Quick review. And they're calling it a shot clock violation. Wow. Must have had it in his hand, so no three. Still a seven point lead. So now UCLA will get it, no basket there. And it remains a seven point Bruin advantage and they can add on to their already largest lead of this afternoon's game. And now because of the wave top basket, 
Oregon State hasn't made a shot in now over three minutes. I mean, and they have three turnovers in the last three minutes. They've just been sloppy because their offense is one-dimensional. It came in, and it is either Jordan Pope with the ball or it's Akano with the ball, and if neither of them make something happens, they don't score. Second consecutive team turnover for the Beavers. Williams has it on the right wing for UCLA. McClendon now on the left, gave it back on to Andrews. Just in front of the Las Vegas logo on the right wing. Into the right corner now for Williams. Back on out now. Andrews top of the key. Gives it a ride, and it's good. Three-pointer there from Dylan Andrews. It's a 10-point Bruin lead, their largest of the game. And Mick Cronin's team is feeling themselves as they head back to their bench. And that's the momentum right there. You just see a couple of shots go down. Edwards right through a really good closeout from Pope. He's just better offense. Morgan State burns their first timeout. 32nd timeout for the temp year head man, Wayne Tinkle. And the Bruins are now on an 8 0 run yet again. And just comes down to making shots and not turning the ball over. You get a couple of threes, you go inside, you get a quick two. And you just, it really is all it is. I mean, UCLA, they have more talent than Oregon State. It's just whether or not they can execute and hit those shots, which they hadn't done up until this run. Dylan Andrews, by the way, who's averaging 11 points in the season, already has 10 here in this first half on four of six shooting, two for three from behind the arc. Yeah, he's reaped the benefits. When he's open, he's been able to shoot and knock them down. As I was, I've said pretty much throughout this entire half, as they work inside out, especially against this Oregon State team, which leaves players like Andrews open on the perimeter with shots. You just got to hit them. So let's see what Wayne Tinkle and his staff drew up in that timeout. Play underway as Pope gives off to right side the top. The pass down to the wing for Akano, working along the left side. And against McLennan, hands it off now. Pope works left side of the baseline, fakes, kicks it. Right corner three on the way. That's short, but the rebound for Rottai doesn't go. Second try for Ebekwe goes and one. Nice job there from Casey Ebekwe. He came flying in after Rottai couldn't get the put back to go. Fought for contact, and now the chance for a three point play. I mean, that's what that's what this guy can give you. He is a, just a massive body down there in the paint. He's, he's pretty big, even considering Bona. I mean, he's only about an inch, maybe even the same height as Adam Bona. Actually, both of them standing at 6'10", except, I mean, Ibekwe has about 40, almost 40, 50 pounds on him. Ibekwe stands at the charity stripe. Only a 45% shooter. Goes it two times, spins the ball, lets it fly. A one-handed stroke is off to the right. And the rebound there for V-Day of UCLA. Bruins want to push here as we enter the final two minutes of play. And he'll slow it down and wait for some open white shirts to come back and help him out. Bona at the top of the key, 20 to shoot. Gave it back on to V-Day. Bona through a screen. V-Day works, pulls it from the free throw line. Off the mark. And the rebound was snagged there from Gavin Mars, who just checked in before the back away free throw. Akano now, top of the semicircle, drives to the right block, picks up his dribble, needs to give it off to avoid a five second call, and he gets called for the five. McClendon and Bona with the double team. Bona turns, stares, and screams at the UCLA student section to fire them up, who have made the drive over from Los Angeles. It's another turnover for Oregon State. They're seventh as a team here in this first half. Bruins lead 30 to 22 with 117 left in the first half. Andrews on the left wing. Weaves for some Beaver defenders. Pulls up for the top of the key for wow. three, and it's good. Dylan Andrews on fire. He's got 13 and a three for four from behind the arc. It's 33 22 Beavers with a minute to go. Who cares about season percentages? This guy doesn't even shoot 30% from beyond the arc and is three for four today. Bruins up by 10. Final 52 seconds in this one. Jordan Pope works his way left. Got doubled and spun on out of it. 10 to shoot. Pope, top of the key. Step back. Bounces in for it. Beckway, and he threw it away. Another turnover. Four in the last four and a half minutes for Oregon State. And the Bruins on an impressive defensive stretch here to close out the first half. And these last five minutes, Oregon State's averaging a turnover every minute, which, I mean, you just, you're not going to be able to get away with it, especially when your offense has been as stagnant as it has. Andrews 
strolling by Matt Cronin right now to get some instructions for the final 30 seconds of this first half. About an eight second difference between game and shot clock. Andrews weaves it in, working on the baseline. Extra pass, Bona gets fouled as he was going up to try to put it down. And he'll go to the line for two. That's number three from Oregon State. Bona might have taken a little bit of a shot to the leg there. He came up limping just a little bit trying to walk it off, but he seems fine. He'll be back at the line, and he's been who everyone's run it through, and you can really only knock him because he's got five turnovers in this game, but you kind of have to put it down to he has the ball on every possession and has to make passes, and Oregon State is, they've done a decent job of being able to force him inside. Bona's first one on the way is good. 34-22, Bruins on top. Mick Cronin after that Arizona game in which Bona struggled. He only had 10 points. All 10 of them came in the first half, and Cronin pretty much was honest with the media and straight out just said this, like if he doesn't have a good game, then we don't have a chance. That's what Mick Cronin said following that loss to Arizona last Thursday night, that if Bona struggles, we all struggle. As he misses the second free throw and late comes down with it for Oregon State, Beavers will likely hold for the final shot with 17 seconds left in the shot clock kill. They trail by 12. The basket here would give him some slight momentum going into the locker room. Akano got doubled on the right wing, worked his way back left, kicked it off for the corner, he got picked off. Andrews works it from the right side, pulls up, half-court shot at the horn, doesn't go. It was all air, but an impressive closeout for UCLA. They close out the first half on a 12-2 run. A 12-2 run within that last five minutes. You they forced five different turnovers during that stretch against Oregon State. Oregon State, they just got sloppy, and UCLA stopped playing sloppy, and that led to the double-digit lead. So, UCLA, 12 of 22 from the floor, 54% on the day. And we talked about Oregon State. They were hanging in for a long time there, but we mentioned the stretch run was not good for them. Obviously good offensive for UCLA. But even better defensively, they forced six turnovers the final six minutes of the half. I mean, it's just that defense we talked about at the, at the top of the half. They they show they only allow 65 points a game. And you held, you hold not a great Oregon State team, but you hold them to 22 points and a half. I mean, that's about as good of a defensive performance as you're going to get. And it starts down low, but the guards are also playing a really good game on the outside. They're showing their hands on every pass, forcing turnovers, and that's what led to this big lead. So UCLA leads 34-22 at the break. We'll step aside for a little bit. When we come back, Walker Smith has it for the second half. 34-22 UCLA on top. Halftime here in game two on day one at the 2024 Pac-12 Men's Basketball Tournament. And you're listening to our exclusive presentation of it here on Blaze Sports. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing with growth in the game each and every day. You don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NOL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop, a show featuring trending K-Pop songs with prominent artists like BTS, rappers like Jessie, and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-Pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-Pop on blazeradioonline.com on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. My name is Jasmine, and I'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing vs. Everyone. I'm Edward Neiman, host of Boxing vs. Everyone. Tune in Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com for the latest boxing analysis, news, updates, and more. Lights, camera, action. Whether you're a Broadway pro or a beginner, join us for Broadway 101 every Monday at 12 p.m. to hear some musical hits. Anthony Scarmack and Anna Olp break down a new production every week with music from the stage and facts about the musical's origin and journey. Find us on blazeradioonline.com or our Instagram at Broadway 101 Radio to see what's happening in the wings for our next show.
Do you get made fun of for your grandpa music taste? Do you shop vintage? Have you ever been called an old soul? Or maybe you just want some new artists to listen to. If so, check out our show. It's called Can You Dig It? The show where we talk old and new artists alike and the relationship between them. Tune in from 4.30 to 5 every Thursday on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com where, where we, we ask, ask the question, question can, can you dig, dig it? it? Have you ever wondered about the meaning behind a song or album? Do you want to learn more about genres, movements, or figures in the world of music? If your answer is yes, then Culture Club is the show for you. From the new romantic movement of the 80s to indies music of the 2010s, we try to cover it all. Every Tuesday at 4 p.m., your hosts, Ayana Porter and I, Merlin Porter, highlight songs and artists while giving you all the cool background infos we can find. So come check out the show, Culture Club, every Tuesday at 4 p.m. on blazeradioonline.com. Diamond in the Rough, ASU's only baseball and golf sports show. Hosted by Ethan Briggs and Evan Reiser, every Monday at 3.30. We will talk about all news in golf, baseball, and life in general on Blaze Radio, blazeradioonline.com. The rock is still alive every time I rhyme. Forever, ever, 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 To flop or not to flop, that is the question. Ask not by Shakespeare, but by me, Selma Krantz, the host of Flop Star here on Blaze Radio. The show is back and better than ever this semester. With an hour of yapping, you're sure to be in the know about all the bops and flops of the world. Tune in Wednesdays from 12.30 to 1.30 Arizona time on blazeradioonline.com to hear the latest and greatest of pop culture and news commentary. Just a music show on Mondays from 11 to 12. A show about sampling. Hosted by a city boy named Shane Saya. Talking about free samples. Coming this spring. The show of a generation. Get up, rock. Get up so you can watch Friday Night Lights camera action on Fridays at 8 p.m. Witness the drama. Are you crying? There's no crying in Friday Night Lights camera action. The pageantry. There ain't gonna be a next time, Jackie. Maybe someday we'll all tune into Friday Night Lights camera action. The emotion. I can't do nothing else but listen to Friday Night Lights camera action. Starring. Parker Perel and Ethan Neal. Friday Night Lights Camera Action, only on Blaze Radio. So go out there and take it. Is what I wanted, is what I've been waiting for, for these cars to come off of this corner. And guys, it's showtime. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing today, boys. Are you a racing fan or want to learn more about the sport? Join Cooper Burns, Henry Dominey, and Eric List every Thursday afternoon from 2 to 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on Blaze Radio as they discuss all things NASCAR, F1, dirt racing, and more on Fuel for Thought. Hey man, did you bring the... No, but I brought the... Oh, well, we can use the... Hey, has anyone seen my... Guys, what happened to the... Have you also been wondering where your nondescript dubstep noises keep disappearing to? Our team at Hot FM will treat your music with the love and care that you deserve. We service all kinds of electronic music, including but not limited to house, jungle core, breakbeat, parkour, dubstep, rhythm, rhyme, drum. Stop by every Friday at noon for the freshest beats and the hardest hitters, only on Blaze Radio. That sound will be here before we know it when the NCAA men's basketball season comes to a close at the Final Four right here in the Valley. What better way to get you ready than by listening to Heat Check, Blaze Radio's premier destination for college basketball. Tune in to Riley, Scott, Cavan, and Ryan each Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m. on blazeradioonline.com. If you're a tennis fan and want to take a little break from your day, 
I'm serving up a show for you. This is your host, Pratam Baluri, bringing you Match Point, your weekly tennis content. I'll cover ongoing tournaments, have monthly guest discussions, analyze players, and replay the previous week's biggest moments. Be sure to tune into Match Point every Tuesday from 3 to 3.30 p.m. on Blaze Radio. Broadcasting live on Blaze Radio, this is News of the World. We are an international news show that highlights and breaks down all the big events happening around the globe. We go beyond the headlines and map out the bigger picture of world news. On at 7 p.m. every Saturday, only on Blaze Radio. Hi, we're Liv and Maddie. And this is Out of Tune, our specialty show on Blaze Radio. If you like to listen to music, we like to talk about it. Every Tuesday from 11 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Tune in! We were just a couple of poses with guitars. They were always out of tune. What is a Pathfinder? The United States Army Pathfinders infiltrate denied areas to set up parachute drop zones for follow-on forces. The Pathfinder podcast is a platform to uncover the thoughts and methods military veterans have applied to become Pathfinders in their own right. Here at Arizona State University's The Blaze Radio, I uncover how these veterans chose their paths with all the trials and successes along the way. I'm your host, Salty the Sun Devil, and this is The Pathfinder Podcast. Do you like Philadelphia sports? Do you think Sue Opeta is a starting caliber right guard? Does the name Nate Gary bring up bad memories? Is the Philly Fanatic the best mascot in sports? Then you should tune in to Philly Out West on Blaze Radio, the show about all things Philly sports based in Phoenix. Your hosts, Jack Hartsonis and Charlie Limoncelli, cover all the details of Philadelphia sports every Friday night at 8.30 p.m. MST. That's Phillies, Eagles, Sixers, Flyers, and all the latest Philly news and culture. We're bringing Philly to the desert. Home to the greatest show on dirt, Omaha, Nebraska is the ultimate destination for every college baseball team. Join Jaden Taylor, Blake Neiman, and Scott Sanduli, along with special guests, as we take you every step of the way to the College World Series. From the Power Five powerhouses... For the third time in the modern era, it is my joy and honor to say the Beavers are the national champions. To the group of five Cinderella's... Coastal Carolina rules the roost, they win the championship. We'll give our insight on the latest happenings in D1 college baseball. So make sure to listen in to Road to Omaha every Sunday night from 8 to 9 p.m. Hello, sports fans. With football season behind us, I'm sure you guys are looking for a fun way to fill your Sunday. And if that's the case, be sure to check out the Scholastic Sports Report live on Blaze Radio every Sunday at 11 a.m., where we take a closer look at some of the Valley's youngest and greatest talent. Be sure to tune in every Sunday from 11 to 11.30, and if you want to nominate your coach or player to be on the show, be sure to reach out at Scholastic Sports Report on Instagram. Are you looking for a new perspective on West Coast sports? Well, I'm here to help you. I'm Jordan Pollitt, host of the specific sports show exclusively on blazeradioonline.com. This show is specifically about Pacific Coast sports, including the NBA, NFL, NCAA football and basketball, baseball, and more. Tune in every Friday from 1130 to noon on blazeradioonline.com to start your Friday afternoon and weekend off right. Hello, friends. Is golf your groove? Then boy, do we have a show for you. Join Peter Bishop, Ian Lonergan, and Owen Castle every Saturday from 3 to 4 p.m. on The Bag Room for your fix of golf's latest news and a little bit of fun. Listen in on blazeradioonline.com, and if you miss a show, feel free to catch up on our Spotify on our channel, The Bag Room. What's up, everyone? It's Jack Footer, a.k.a. Jay Fu, and host of The Jay Fu Show. 
Each week on the show, you'll hear a great collection of tunes from the J Foo theme of the week. The songs will get you moving, grooving, and maybe even singing along, and it's a great way to kickstart your Sunday fun day. So make sure you tune in every Sunday morning from 10 to 11 to the J Foo Show, right here on Blaze Radio, streaming exclusively at blazeradioonline.com. Jacob, Jacob, Jake, Jacob, Jacob, Jake, Jacob Jones. Jacob Jones. It's a little hot out here. Let's cool off. Woo! Let's go! Splash. Splash. Ben Yates. Yeah. Well, I'm just glad I got you to stop speaking for a minute. That was awesome. The Valley Variety, live. Every Sunday at noon. On Blaze Radio. Welcome to The Voyage. I am your host, Pacey Smith Garcia. Join me as we travel the world in search of incredible music and venture into some of its more obscure sides. We'll hear the sounds of Senegalese disco, the dream pop of Japan, and so much more. Join me on The Voyage on Sundays at 2 p.m. only on Voyage Radio. Welcome to the land of Faerun. The magical world behind Dungeons and Dragons. My name is Anufak McDaniels, and I'm your dutiful guide, bringing you the lore and legends of Faerun every single week. So unload your equipment and take a seat at the tavern, adventurers, for Traveler's Guide to Faerun. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m., only on Blaze Radio. If you'd like to cast your vote for Tribe Talk, tune in Fridays at 2 p.m. The hosts, Evan Reiser and Daniel Pike, discuss the weekly Survivor episode, season predictions, and the history of the game. Make sure to cast your vote. News, predictions, rankings, interviews, and more. Tune in to Trip Around the Bases with Cooper, Logan, and David. And Barnes hit for high. It's a game. It is high here. Tune in to Trip Around the Bases every Thursday at 1 p.m. live on Blaze Radio. Hey, did you see that catch Evan Carter made in left field? Who? You know, Evan Carter, the minor league player that got called up by the Rangers? Or what about the up-and-coming Diamondback, Jordan Lawler? Who? Well, let me tell you, this is Minor League's major show, where we talk about all things minor league baseball. Up on deck, every Friday at 3 p.m. on Blaze Radio. Who? Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. This they put some tickets you heard the man. It's time for the second half between Oregon State and UCLA with Kevin Malater. I'm Walker Smith on the call. UCLA leads 34-22 to in what really was kind of a sputtery first half, Kevin. Uh, it was a game in which, you know, it feels like this has now been the second consecutive game for UCLA where they haven't been able to get into a flow, and the game feels really choppy. Saturday night, that game against Arizona State was a game of many runs, but really just, although the offenses, when they scored, were efficient, the shots they were taking, a lot of empty possessions, a lot of bad turnovers, a lot of sloppy passes, and the game couldn't really find a good, a good rhythm. The exact same thing has happened today, and Oregon State was taking full and complete advantage of it, except... The problem is then they committed six turnovers, one per minute, in the final six minutes of that first half and allowed UCLA to get this a 12-point lead. UCLA ended the first half on a 12-2 run in the last about four and a half minutes of play, while Oregon State went in the opposite direction, turned the ball over five times in the final four minutes and only got those two points, which puts them in the hole down 12 with 20 to go in their season. Both of these teams nowhere near an NCAA tournament resume, so this is really do or die for both of these teams. Win and you're in, but you gotta win in round one. Oregon State starts with the ball, Akano brings it up across the timeline. He's picked up by Sebastian Mack, gives it up to the top, swing to the corner, Pope tries a corner three, off the cut is good. A good start for Jordan Pope. 
Uh, that's big. Oregon State needed to get an early shot there. You know, just get some confidence and breed some confidence back in their offense. Pope only had five points on one, for, excuse me, two for seven shooting in that first half. Comes out early and gets eight. Now, Sebastian Mack on his right side. Gives it to the top of the key, Brandon Williams, who now gives it to Andrews. Andrews drives across the paint, goes to the free throw line, dumps it off to Bona, who tries and goes right up over, over Beckway. Can't get it. Rebound falls to Ratai, who gives it over to Pope on the left side. Nifty move there from Bona on a backdoor cut. UCLA up nine with about a, about a minute gone in this second half. Bona gambles on the pass, doesn't get it. Drive inside is no good, but we're going to get a foul. They're going to call it on Sebastian Mack. That'll be his third. Yeah, he came flying in. So Rotai did a great job. You talk about the gamble there from Bona. He tried to pick off that pass in the corner. I think he was thinking it was going to be a catch and shoot situation there for Rotai. Nice job there and a heads up play there by the German product to fake the three drive baseline and force Sebastian Mack now to go back to the bench. That's his third foul of the game already. Will McClendon enters for him. Pope with it with 15 on the shot clock on the right wing. Looking to go inside, doesn't, goes back to his left, kicks to the top of the key, a three-point from Tyler. From Tyler, Billadow is no good. Excuse me, Billadow, as he can't get it. Rebound falls to UCLA. Still up nine. And Edwards' mid-range jump shot is no good. He thought he was fouled. No call. Pope gets it after the rebound. Kicks it to the right side. Ratai is pushed back out by Bono with 20 on the shot clock, looking for an inside pass, doesn't find it, picked up his dribble, finally goes inside to Beckway, who goes up and down. No call quite yet. They say he bobbled it and goes back up and puts it in. What a great cut that was from Ratai there, going inside on a little pick and pop there. Faked the screen, drove in behind Bona, and a great finish there. Oregon State starting on a five to nothing run to open this half in the first two minutes. Laser Stefanovic goes inside to Williams. He's looking to back down Ratai, throws up a floater, is good off the fadeaway from about eight feet out. Good that, shot from Williams. And he's got to get going here in the second half. Without the production there of Sebastian Mack, who has three fouls, Williams is going to have to step up. That's just his second basket, fourth point of the game. He's really not much of a scorer for this team, but in a game like this, he might have to be. Exactly. First points of the half came from him. They're up by nine, 17 and a half to play. Ball on the right side with Ratai, who goes inside, drives in on Stefanovic, loses it, a good poke away there. That was Will McClendon who came up with it. Andrews kicks it back out, goes up strong and one. Brandon Williams, there he is on offense, chance for a three-point play. Uh, that's a beautiful play design right there from UCLA out of transition. Andrews did a nice job. The no look pass right into the paint. And Williams bounces off the contact and lays it in. That's big. Like I said, need to get him going here in a game like this where you lose already a lot of, when you struggle to generate offense in the first place, but then when you lose some of your offensive production to foul trouble, he's going to have to step up right there. Now he's shooting above his season average. Free throw is no good, but Stefanovic comes down with the offensive rebound, is immediately tied up by Ratai. And the possession arrow favors the Bruins, so they'll keep the ball and have it side out next to their bench. You mentioned Brandon Williams. He's a freshman, plays kind of a guard forward hybrid role out of Queens, New York. You said already has over the average. He only averages about three points a game on 35% shooting from the field. Not the most efficient, but he's playing well today. Andrews inbounds it to Bona. He's crowded. Back to Andrews from the baseline. Gets the 10-foot jump shot to fall. A little give and go there action there. Bona on the inbounds. Oregon State doubled him because he's within that five feet mm -hmm. range where he's so dangerous. Andrews left wide open. Great play design there by Mick Cronin. Got to pick up the inbounder. Ratai with it on the left. Gives it up to the top. Bilodeau now on the right side. Akanu goes inside Pope, who lays it up and in, but can't get it off the back rim. Felt the presence of Bona. Rebound tapped around, goes out of bounds. They're going to keep it on the Beaver into the floor. All right, Pope just kind of left that floater short. He saw Bona come flying in. Looks like Bona was going to touch it there for a mm -hmm. second, which would have been a goaltending. Heads up play there to let it go, and got lucky because of the miss there. Inbound, finds Akanu, who throws up a mid-range jump shot. Doesn't hit anything. If anything, it hit the front of the rim. 
falls right into Andrews' hands. He brings it up and slows it down. 13-point lead for UCLA, 16.30 to go. Stefanovic, he's been quiet today, gives it to Bona at the top. Hand off to McClendon, goes to Stefanovic on the left wing. Kicks back out. This is McClendon, fakes the shot, drives into the paint, kicks out again. This time the three is taken no good from Williams. Rebound to Stefanovic, though, another offensive board for UCLA, a fresh 20 coming. A great job there. They're crashing the boards right now. Sixth offensive rebound of the day for the Bruins. Andrews taking his time, gets a screen from Williams, crosses up, fires a mid-range shot from well behind the free throw line and gets it to fall. Another mid-range jump shot for Andrews. He's got 17 points. My goodness, what a sneaky 17 he's had. <laughs> UCLA on a six to nothing run. Oregon State hasn't scored in two and a half minutes after making the first five points of the game, excuse me, of the half. Hit back way at the top, gives it to the right side. Man is stopped, gives it over to Pope out by the logo. Five to shoot, gives it back to Beckway. He's hounded, gives it to Okanu inside to the shooter is good. It's Bilodeau who gets it. A quick one touch there, pretty much catch and shoot upon release there for Bilodeau. Beavers needed a basket to break a drought. Bilodeau's got seven points on three for four shooting. A great floater there. 15 to go, 13 point lead for UCLA. Andrews. At the top of the key, fires up a heat check three, no good. Rebound goes to the left side, is sent back into play by McClendon, and it's going to go off of a beaver and stay on this end, and that'll take us to the under 16 of the second half. UCLA leads 42-29. to We'll be right back. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest-growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio Show, Bop to K-Pop a show featuring trending K-pop songs with prominent artists like BTS, rappers like Jessie, and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-pop on blazeradioonline.com on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. My name is Jasmine, and I'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing vs. Everyone. I'm Edward Neiman, host of Boxing vs. Everyone. Tune in Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com for the latest boxing analysis, news, updates, and more. Lights. Camera. Action. Whether you're a Broadway pro or a beginner. Join us for Broadway 101 every Monday at 12 p.m. to hear some musical hits. Anthony Scarmack and Anna Olp break down a new production every week with music from the stage and facts about the musical's origin and journey. Find us on blazeradioonline.com or our Instagram at Broadway 101 Radio to see what's happening in the wings for our next show. Do you get made fun of for your grandpa music taste? Do you shop vintage? Have you ever been called an old soul? Or maybe you just want some new artists to listen to. If so, check out our show. It's called Can You Dig It? The show where we talk old and new artists alike and the relationship between them. Tune in from 4.30 to 5 every Thursday on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com where, where we, we ask, ask the question, question can, can you dig, dig it? it? Have you ever wondered about the meaning behind a song or album? Do you want to learn more about genres? With 14.55 to go, the Bruins lead the Oregon State Beavers 42-29 to as we welcome you back to Blaze Radio from Las Vegas with Kevin Malater. I'm Walker Smith. And after Oregon State came out a little hot to start this half, they've kind of slowed down. It's been a little more of the same. And UCLA is keeping their double-digit lead. Yeah, I mean, great defense. I mean, you just look at... What they've been able to accomplish so far. They forced 10 turnovers so far in this ball game, and really they've they've struggled now to get things going. They're 
two of 10 from behind the arc, and they're going to have to start shooting their way back into this game right now. But when you're shooting that poorly, it makes it really difficult. UCLA has 16 points off of those turnovers as we're going to have a foul off the inbound. Bona hit the deck hard. We're waiting to see what's called on. Players look like they're staying at this. Actually, no, they are going to go the other side, so they're going to call foul on UCLA. Not quite sure. I think they're going to call on Adam Bona for being a little too aggressive on the inbound, maybe a little push in the back. He extended a forearm, so I think that may be what they got him for there. That's Bona's sixth turnover of the game. He's struggled to hold on to the ball. It's really been his only fault up to this point. Inside, Ibekwe working on Bona, goes up with the left hand and finishes. I think a Beckway guy away off a travel there. Looks like he picked up his pivot foot on the spin move against Bona. Couldn't quite tell, but the officials thought it was clean. Now Andrews with 20 on the shot clock gives McClendon on the right side. Goes back inside. Now it's Williams who goes up strong, can't finish through a Beckway. Rebound falls to Justin Rochlin, who just entered out of the break. Inside, and we're going to have a foul. Rochlin looking for. Tyler Bilodeau. UCLA foul. Bilodeau was fouled on the catch. We had a third, third, third team foul, his third personal as well. So Stefanovic might be coming out of the game. Sebastian <laughs> Mack re enters. So now you're playing the matchup game and the foul trouble game here for your Mick Cronin. Stefanovic, like you just mentioned, has three. Mack, who re entered, has three as well. Pope off the inbound, fires a three, it's short. Rebound goes off the top of the backboard, recovered by Oregon State. Now a three-point shot is good from Akano, hits it from straight on. Dexter Akano, he's got five points now. He's been quiet, but he hasn't taken that many shots. That's his first three, his first points of the half. Mack, back in the game, gives it over to the right side, who gives it back to Mack. Now Andrews, close to the corner, goes inside Bona on the right block. Kicks it back out, Andrews, they're playing pass. Bona goes inside, goes up strong and finishes. No, no basket on the floor. I think they're gonna call Bona, they're gonna say Bona got held before he went into the shot motion. It was really close, either way it'll be ball out of bounds under the basket, UCLA keeps it. Yeah, I, I mean, it looked like he was in the process of shooting the basketball. It looked like he was going up, and that was the argument that Adem Bona was making to the official right in front of the UCLA bench. He made almost the exact same move earlier in the last half, but Bona gets it inside off the inbound, can't finish, rebound fell to Beckway. Now Pope pushing it down the right side. Moving to his left, gives it over. Rochlin, who goes inside to Beckway, working on Bona is fouled by Bona inside. Bona tried to reach and strip it, couldn't get it to go, officials called it. And right now, I mean, this is an Oregon State team. They can, they can get back into this thing. Still obviously plenty of time. They're on a 7-0 run right now. Mm -hmm. Two teams going in opposite directions. UCLA hasn't scored in the past two and a half minutes. Oregon State has cut the lead to only eight for UCLA with 13-15 to go. Inbound to Pope. He'll drive to his right, goes across paint, throws up a layup. It's blocked off the backboard by Williams. He palmed that thing right off the glass. Andrews now pushes it instead. Goes back up top, Bona, looking for someone to pass to. Hands off to McClendon, who gets a screen from Bona. Gives it back over. The recently entered Jan Vide is fouled on the drive. They're going to call it on Dexter Akano. It's his second personal third team foul. And it'll be on the floor again, so Andrews will inbound under the basket. Inbound inside to Williams, kicks it back out. McClendon thought about a shot, a couple jab steps, gives it over to Vide. Now Williams in the corner, drives right past it. Beckway goes up strong, can't finish, no call. Bona with the offensive board, goes up, can't convert the and one, but gets fouled, will be at the line for two shots. I love the persistence there from Adem Bona. I mean, he's getting bruised, he's getting battered, he's currently grabbing his left hand right now. I think he may have like hit it against the rim trying to go up with that shot right there, may have jammed it. He is a warrior. I mean, and he is so, so good, he's mm -hmm. so physical. I mean, even though he has the height advantage, he's got 
the two Oregon State defenders who are bigger than him in terms of their body mass. And he's going pound for pound, toe for toe. And man, he's just so, so good down low. Something about him, he just, you, his athleticism yeah. jumps off the page for someone his size, as well as oh, the energy sure. he plays with. You see him after every good play, he's out there yelling, getting his teammates up, and really is, as well as the best player, really kind of the most important in terms of getting everyone to rally and keeping the energy up for the five that are on the floor for the Bruins. He hit the first free throw, here comes the second to extend the lead back to 10. Can't get it to go, lead stays at nine with 12.40 to go. Big possession here for Oregon State, opportunity to take advantage. And we use their way back into this game, only now nine. Pope gets a screen from Akano, gives back to the recently checked in Shoal Mariel. Now Akano at the top, 10 to shoot. Dribbles to his right, working on Edwards. Goes back to his left, fades away from the free throw line. Too strong, rebound tipped around. We're gonna have a foul called on the floor. I think someone must have gotten held on the box out. Mariel did, he got held up there. They're gonna call it on Bona. Yeah, Bona was going for the board. Mariel beat him to it, had the better angle. Mm. Good box out there, he beat him to it. Bona reaches out, Mariel in the process of running, got his hand pulled back by Adam Bona right there. Easy call for the official on the baseline. With his third foul, Bona will exit. Ade Mara will enter to replace him. Oregon State off the inbound, 15 to shoot. It's Pope in the corner. He'll get a screen, goes to his right. Mara picks him up on the switch. Andrews switches back on him, goes inside. Tyler goes up strong, gets the floater to go. Soft Tyler touch Bilodeau. for Tyler Bilodeau. He's got nine points in this contest, only a seven point lead for UCLA now. Oregon State really chipping away at this lead for the past couple of minutes. And now these are huge minutes with Bona on the bench. Mara goes inside. Next stoppage will be the medium out. Mara fades away, pushing it down the left. Dribbles to his right, gets a screen from Mariel. Now at the top of the key, Mariel called for it, didn't get it. Now swing to the left side. Billadow in the corner. He's picked up by Williams. Billadow backs him down, turns around him, goes a pass to the corner. It's taken away by Andrews. Great heads up play. Ball is kicked by the offensive player into the front court. Now Andrews tries a three, and he hits it after the ball goes around the court. Ade Mara assists Dylan Andrews on the three, and that'll take us to the under 12. With 11 minutes to go, UCLA leads by 10. We'll be right back on Blaze Radio. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week. Hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing with growth in the game each and every day. You don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NLL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop a show featuring trending K-pop songs with prominent artists like BTS, rappers like Jessie, and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-pop on blazeradioonline.com on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. My name is Jasmine, and I'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing vs. Everyone. I'm Edward Neiman, host of Boxing vs. Everyone. Tune in Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com for the latest boxing analysis, news, updates, and more. Lights. Camera, action. Whether you're a Broadway pro or a beginner, join us for Broadway 101 every Monday at 12 p.m. to hear some musical hits. Anthony Scarmack and Anna Olp break down a new production every week with music from the stage and facts about the musical's origin and journey. Find us on blazeradioonline.com or our Instagram at Broadway 101 Radio to see what's happening in the wings for our next show. Do you get made fun of for your grandpa music taste? Do you shop vintage? Have you ever been called an old soul? 
Or maybe you just want some new artists to listen to. If so, check out our show. It's called Can You Dig It? The show where we talk old and new artists alike and the relationship between them. Tune in from 4.30 to 5 every Thursday on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com where Where we ask the question, question, can you dig it? Have you ever wondered about the meaning behind a song or album? Do you want to learn more about genres, movements, or figures in the world of music? If your answer is yes, then Culture Club is the show for you. From the new romantic movement of the 80s to indies music of the 2010s, we try to cover it all. Every Tuesday at 4 p.m., your hosts, Ayana Porter and I, Merlin. We're back from Las Vegas, Nevada. UCLA leads by 10 in this first round matchup between the Bruins and the Beavers. The 5-12 matchup tipped off at about 2.30, 2.45, currently 4.15 here on the West Coast. Beavers will have the ball. Some full court pressure from UCLA. They're able to get it in. Billadell is over there. Gives it to Pope, who crosses the timeline on the left side. 20, on, 20 to shoot, looking for a screen. Doesn't use it. Pope dribbles net back to his left, just dribbling around the top of the key currently. Goes over on the right side. Now back inside, Mariol. Mariol gives it back out to Pope. Pope, jab-stepping, has the mismatch. Kicks over. A three-point shot from Dexter. Akanu is good. Big time, big time bucket right there. Easing into it, you want it, if you're Oregon State, you want this thing to get to two to three possessions right here and you can see yourself winning this ball game. Okano, two for two from downtown this half. He's got eight points in the game. Andrews dishes it inside. It's Mara working on Marial. Can't get it to go, rebound falls falls to Rochland. Only a seven point lead for UCLA now. Chance to cut it to two possessions for the Beavers. Pope drives to his right, immediately shut down by Stefanovic. Working on Stefanovic a little more. Steps back, loses the ball. Quick hands from McClendon. Bodies hit the floor as the ball's on the floor. And we're going to have a foul. Waiting to see who it's called on. I think they might call this on McClendon and keep the ball on the Beaver end of the floor. It will be on Will McClendon. That'll be his second and UCLA that was the last foul, foul to give. Clinton, second personal six team. Timeout on the floor. And we're going to have a timeout on the floor. Not entirely sure which team called it or if we'll, All right, here we we're going to review we it while we wait for the, the decision right. or whatever the stoppage right. was for. We'll take a quick break. This is Blaze Radio from Las Vegas. Oh, beautiful. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NOL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop a show featuring trending K-pop songs with prominent artists like BTS, rappers like Jesse, and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bob You then. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing vs. Everyone. I'm Edward Neiman, host of Boxing vs. Everyone. Tune in Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com for the latest boxing analysis, news, updates, and more. Lights, camera, action. Whether you're a Broadway pro or a beginner, Join us for Broadway 101 every Monday at 12 p.m. to hear some musical hits. Anthony Scarmack and Anna Olp break down a new production every week with music from the stage and facts about the musical's origin and journey. Find us on blazeradioonline.com or our Instagram at Broadway 101 Radio. We're back on Blaze Radio. Just to clarify, it appeared the game had been behind in media timeout, so that stoppage. 9.50 to go start, that's the under 16, thank you. Cabin for clarifying that in the break. UC 
UCLA currently up seven, under 10 to play in this matchup. Oregon State kind of hanging around, and UCLA not doing themselves any favors. They're one for their last seven from the field. No, oh, and credit to Oregon State. You know, they've started to lock things down defensively. They've made UCLA take some bad or awkward shots, and the Bruins also have gone on the free throw line a bunch, but have struggled to capitalize on those opportunities. Just seven of 10 as a team today. Jordan Pope fires a three from the top and hits it. It's a four point lead for UCLA. Jordan Pope starting to catch fire. He's got 11 points, his second three of the half. Bona checked in out of the media timeout, has the ball at the top. Give it to Andrews. Andrews will try an answer from long range. It does, nothing but nylon for Dylan Andrews. What an important answer for Dylan Andrews in UCLA. That was a much needed three right there for McCronin's team. And that bench, you can definitely tell, a little more pep in their step, a lot more energy on that bench now on, oh, just to our right. Oregon State, three of their last three from the field. Pope steps back off a push off, no good. Rebound tapped out. Find its way into a Kanu's hands. An offensive board for Oregon State resets it. 15 to shoot, nine to go. Oregon State down seven. Akanu gets a screen from Mariel at the top of the key, dribbles back to his right, goes inside, fades away from five feet out, and hits it to yes, cut the lead to five. Andrews will bring it up slowly. UCLA really just trying to keep a lid on Oregon State and try and keep up with the offense they're coming up with. Williams gives it inside. Stefanovic gets pushed back out to the top of the key, goes inside Bona now. Off of the pass from McClendon. Bona immediately triple teamed inside. Doesn't matter. Bona just out muscles Mariel and lays it up in with the right hand. Seven point lead for UCLA. Just over eight to play. Pope taking his time. He's working on Dylan Andrews. Gives it to Akanu on the left. Who gets a screen from Mariel. He'll dribble to his right. Thought about a shot. Double team goes inside. Mariel on the catch. Immediately swarmed by Bona. Goes up strong, can't finish over the top of the big man. Andrews continuing to take his time off the Bona rebound. That's Bona's fifth rebound of the day. He's got 15 and five. Andrews into the corner for Stefanovic, who goes back inside Bona, double teamed by Rochelin and Mariol. We're gonna have a foul on the floor. They're gonna call it on Mariol. Now weird, weird couple possessions there from both sides. Big thing is though, they're heating up from behind the arc. Gonna be a lot of fun down the stretch. Looking like it's starting to heat up down the stretch. Oregon State manufacturing a good amount of offense in this second half. They're 66% from beyond the arc and shooting 50% in this half. We'll be right back as we've hit the under eight media timeout. UCLA up seven. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest and the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NOL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop, a show featuring trending K-Pop songs with prominent artists like BTS, rappers like Jesse, and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-Pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-Pop on Blaze Radio on... Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing vs. Everyone. I'm Edward Neiman, host of Boxing vs. Everyone. Tune in Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com for the latest boxing analysis, news, updates, and more. Lights, camera, action. Whether you're a Broadway pro or a beginner, join us for Broadway 101 every Monday at 12 p.m. to hear some musical hits. Anthony Scarmack and Anna Olp break down a new production every week with music from the stage and facts about the musical's origin and journey. Find us on blazeradioonline.com or our Instagram at broadway101radio to see what's happening in the wings for our next show. Do you get made fun of for your grandpa music taste? Do you shop vintage? 
Have you ever been called an old soul? Or maybe you just want some new artists to listen to. If so, check out our show. It's called Can You Dig It? The show where we talk old and new artists alike and the relationship between them. Tune in from 4.30 to 5 every Thursday on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com. Where, where we, we ask the... Get tickets now to see Spice Wannabe at Excalibur.com. Oregon State doing their best to keep this one a game. They're hanging around UCLA, currently trailing by 7 with 7.38 to play. In this second half, they've gotten some good contributions from their two star players. Jordan Pope has six points on two for three shooting from downtown. And as well as Dexter Akanu has eight points in this half, three for five from the field, along with two triples as well, while UCLA has kind of uh, been sputtering on offense in this half. UCLA gets it out of the media timeout. Stefanovic, who's been really quiet today. McClendon in the corner. Gives it inside Bono's double team. Kick out Andrews, thought about it. Stefanovic at the top. Swing to McClendon. Goes inside Bona. Great passing, and Bona is going to be fouled. I believe they're going to call it on Tyler Bilodeau. The, the Bilodeau came out on the help side, went forearm to the gut there of Bona. And yes, that is exactly what they're calling right there. You said it earlier. I mean, Bona just takes hit after hit from these games especially a team like Oregon State that has a lot of size and some big bodies. Bounce pass inbound to Williams. Stefanovic fake the shot, give it to Bona. Hand off back to Stefanovic who goes to his left, fires from the mid-range. Yes, it's pure. Lazar Stefanovic. Stefanovic hits his first shot of the day. He's one for three. Pope gives it to Kanu who dribbles to his left, picked up by McClendon. Under seven to play, UCLA up nine. Milladow goes inside. Can't finish, that was Ibekwe who was trying to go over Bona, couldn't get it to go, and Andrews continuing to take his time. I mean, one thing I've really noticed from UCLA is kind of how slow they've kind of slowed down their offense to Kevin. Yeah, and that's the thing. Once you get inside seven minutes in the second half, when they have a lead, Mick Cronin's gonna play the slow tempo game, don't take a shot until you get to the, about the five second mark on the shot clock. Bona kicks it back out off a shot fake and we have an air ball triple from McClendon who doesn't bounds. hit anything and it goes out of bounds. Now you wonder if you do that as Mick Cronin, do you kind of make your team go cold if you're telling them, hey, let's just take as long as we can. They kind of get out of whatever rhythm they were in earlier. I mean, it's the risk you take. I think it's also from his perspective with a young team like this, He's just trying to, I mean, he just hasn't felt confident in this team. He said it. As Bilodeau goes inside and slams it in off the feed from a back way. It's more of a, he's trying to drain possessions and drain clock and trying to minimize the amount of possessions that Oregon State has as Cronin takes a timeout as Andrews gets into the front court. Cronin wants to make sure that that dunk doesn't lead to any momentum for Oregon State on this timeout. We'll keep it here for about a minute. And you talked about it, Mick Cronin, really considering all the success this team has had over the past three or four years, they win 29 games last year, 27 games the year prior, 22 games in the 2020-21 season. You come in here and if you're Mick Cronin, you would have a little bit less confidence in your first under 500 team in four years. Yeah, and, and that's the other thing is he's caught a lot of fire on social media for the comments he's made. And I, it's been kind of funny because when you've been looking at it this season, it's been kind of like, this is kind of his first team with some of his guys that he's recruited. Because most of the guys in those those 20 plus one teams, final four teams, were from the Alford era. Yep. When you look at it. And so I think he's gotten a lot more fire and a lot of grief from the fan base because this is a fan base that says, well, this is kind of one of your first teams with your guys here. And I think that's where you've had kind of the controversy surrounding some of his comments and throwing his players under the bus this season. Coming into this tournament game, it's the first time they had been in the first round of the Pac-12 tournament in five tournaments. Last time it did it was in 2019. Andrews kicks it out to McClendon out of the timeout. 5.45 to go, UCLA up seven. Lead has kind of hung around that number for the past give or take 10 minutes. Dylan Andrews, a three, he hits it. He's got 26 points and six threes. I mean, he came in. In two games against Oregon State this season, averaged 15 points in those two meetings. 
11 above that average in the two times against the Beavers so far. A 10-point lead for UCLA after the triple from Andrews. 15 to shoot for the Beavs. Bilodeau trying to drive in on the left elbow, fires up a jump shot. It's good. A tough fadeaway jump shot from Tyler Bilodeau. Yeah, pretty stroke right there from Bilodeau. Needed a basket to quiet the UCLA fans that made the drive over from Westwood. Andrews brings it up to court. He's got 26 on 10 for 14 shooting, 6 for 8 from distance. He's also got two rebounds and three assists. Stefanovic gives it back to Andrews after the give and go. Andrews gets a screen from Bona, goes inside, kicks out Stefanovic. He'll fire one. Yes! Lazar Stefanovic hits a triple and he's starting to heat up to end this game. Under five to go. Lead back to 11 for UCLA. And this is now, if you're Wayne Tenkel, you got to start thinking about two for ones here at some point. Yep. Down by 11 right now, just under four and a half to play. Great shot, though, by Stefanovic on the other end. Stefanovic, who had been quiet most of the day, finally hits a couple of shots in rhythm. Pope drives, kicks out to his man, Dexter Akanu. Couldn't get it. Tall rebound goes over to Stefanovic. Who gives it to Edwards, who continues to bring it up slow. Under four to play. Next stoppage will be the last media timeout of the ball game. Andrews working on Akanu. Gives it to Bona at the center of the court. Stefanovic gets a screen, fires a mid-range jump shot. Well short, long rebound. Finds Akanu, and Stefanovic bodied him. And that'll be a foul on UCLA and take us to the under four media timeout. UCLA has hit five of their last seven UCLA and are trying to close this one out and make it to the second round. We'll be right back. This is Blaze Radio. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NOL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop, a show featuring trending K-Pop songs with prominent artists like BTS, rappers like Jesse, and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-pop on blazeradioonline.com on Tuesdays at 2:30 p.m. My name is Jasmine, and I'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing vs. Everyone. I'm Edward Neiman, host of Boxing vs. Everyone. Tune in Saturdays at 8 a.m. on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com for the latest boxing analysis, news, updates, and more. Lights, camera, action. Whether you're a Broadway pro or a beginner, join us for Broadway 101 every Monday at 12 p.m. to hear some musical hits. Anthony Scarmack and Anna Olp break down a new production every week with music from the stage and facts about the musical's origin and journey. Find us on blazeradioonline.com or our Instagram at Broadway 101 Radio to see what's happening in the wings for our next show. Do you get made fun of for your grandpa music taste? Do you shop vintage? Have you ever been called an old soul? Or maybe you just want some new artists to listen to. If so, check out our show. It's called Can You Dig It? The show where we talk old and new artists alike and the relationship between them. Tune in from 4.30 to 5 every Thursday on Blaze Radio at blazeradioonline.com where we ask the question, question, can you dig it? Have you ever wondered about the meaning behind a song or album? Do you want to learn more about genres, movements, or figures in the world of music? If your answer is yes, then Culture Club is the show for you. From the new romantic movement of the 80s to indie music of the 2010. UCLA starting to pull away from this one late. They're up 11 with under four to play in this first round matchup between them and Oregon State. As I said before the break, they have started to get really hot from the field. They're five for their last seven, but Lazar Stefanovic, excuse me, Lazar Stefanovic picked up his fourth personal right before the break. He's still in the ball game. 
But that was the last foul to give for UCLA, so they'll put Akanu at the line for a one and one. This to cut the lead to 10. Can't get it to go, and the rebound falls to Stefanovic. Got to hit that. You have to have to hit that. It's a tough miss for a 71% free throw shooter. Williams gives it out to Andrews, and Andrews will take his time. The trap coming from Akanu and Rochelin. Swings it to Stefanovic on the other side of the court. Picking up his dribble. Looks like Oregon State switched to a little bit of a trap zone to try and close this one out and come back. Five to shoot for Andrews. Andrews looking to find somewhere to go with it. Three to shoot. Goes inside Williams. One to shoot. Goes up strong. Can't get it to go. And it'll be a shot clock violation as Williams' shot didn't hit the rim. Right there, just another poor possession offensively for UCLA. Every time they th they, we think they start to get a rhythm right there, it's just the self-inflicted wounds that just keep killing them. Mm -hmm. We'll see if they can continue to pull this one out. They've led virtually the entire game. Last time Oregon State led was when they led 11 to 10 with 14.20 to go in the first half. And it's crazy that at one point this was a four-point game. That's what the crazy thing is. This was a four-point game about seven and a half minutes ago. Andrews looks for Stefanovic after Oregon State missed a layup on their previous possession and turned the ball over as Stefanovic was faking, a, starting to do a back cut, just miscommunication between Andrews and Stefanovic. And Mick Cronin just screamed at both of them on their way yep. back down to the other end of the floor right there. He's not happy with, despite being up 11, he's not happy with the brand of basketball his team's playing right now. Key possession here for Oregon State, down 11 with 2.40 to go. Pope with the ball. We're going to have an off the ball foul. I think they're going to call it on Will McClendon. Maybe some grabbing going on. Actually, McClendon just entered. It'll be. Well, not quite sure who the Check foul was on. on I was about to say, 12, it has to be on Sebastian yeah. Mack. Okay, we'll, they're we'll, going to call it on Mack. You're we'll, right. The P and answer announced it is Sebastian Mack or Will McLennan, and it can't be right because oh. McLennan just came off the bench. Just came off the bench after the whistle. Mm -hmm. So there's no possible so way. So back at the line for a one and one. Crucial free throws here. Can't get that one either. Two, two. free throw misses for Akanu. Not good. And that was a really important possession for them. If UCLA is able to burn some clock here, it might be over. Stefanovic to Andrews, back close to center court. 18 to shoot, two and a half minutes to go. Andrews thought about a shot, swings it to Stefanovic on the other side. Back to Andrews, fakes to the corner. Andrews will fire a three, and he hits his seventh three of the ball game. Dylan Andrews, we know you're the player of the game today. He's got 29 points. Inside, Pope, excuse me, Akanu is good on the layup. Finishes through contact, didn't hear a foul. We're going to have a timeout called by Oregon State, but the Dylan Andrews three extends the lead. UCLA up by 12 with two to go. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NOL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio Show, Bop to Cape. The four seed Oregon Ducks lie in wait tomorrow in the second round for what's looking like to be UCLA trying to pull this one out. Up 12 in this first round matchup against the Beavers. They lead 62 to 50. Just shy of that 65 point mark that really has been their magic number this season. When the Bruins score 65 points, they are 13 and four this season. And Wayne Tinkle calls the timeout, full court press here. This is a big spot here for Oregon State, and Mick Cronin's going to burn a timeout. It was McClendon who felt the trap in the backcourt and quickly called a timeout, knowing he had one to burn. UCLA will have another one after that one. We'll keep it here with two minutes to go, and you start to look ahead. Obviously, these teams in this first round really trying to buy at the bit at each other to go play one of the better teams in the conference. This kind of spot UCLA finds themselves in. They're a five seed. They'll 
likely, barring a comeback, go on to play Oregon tomorrow in what is always a good color matchup between the beautiful blue and the beautiful green of those two schools. And a pr two pretty evenly matched teams, I'd say, if UCLA makes it that far. But they still have some work to do up to this point. No, right now, sure. Dylan Andrews has been the star of this game. He's got 29 points. Odin Bona has been pretty quiet this second half, but he's got 15 and 5 along with six turnovers to go with it. Safanovic also on the floor with five points. On the Oregon State side, Jordan Pope has 11 and Dexter Akanu only have 12. They've been held pretty quiet by the UCLA defense this game that has held a not too bad Oregon State offense, only 50 points this game. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're the best defensive team in the conference for a reason and granted like you look at Oregon State's numbers, the only thing they're top four in the conference in is free throw percentage. And Bona gets the inbound and is immediately fouled. Oregon State didn't have one to burn, so Bona will go to the free throw line. Oregon State who has been ABC really Benjamin. just incredible from the free throw line today. He's seven for nine 17. from the stripe, a little above his average. He averages 69.6% .6 of his free throws falling. Seven for nine, 11 of 15. It's nuts. Truly. Bona at the free throw line right now really has only had, has been gone really quiet this half. After scoring 12 in the first, he has only scored three points on one for three shooting and is one for two from the stripe in the second 20 minutes. Can't hit the front end of the one and one, misses the free throw. Akanu, Oregon State needs a bucket here in a bad way. Looking for Pope, continuing to dribble as Akanu steps back a three, two strong, offensive rebound back out to Pope. Pope dribbles to his left, fires a three. That one is short, Bono with the board. And he'll be immediately fouled. And you have to think after that possession, that might just be it. Yeah, I want to go back with Dylan Andrews. 29 points today, career high for him. I mean, just so, so good. I mean, you look at just career high in th points, three points made. Um, career high in field goals made. I mean, just just really the game of really the game of his season. He's played 37 minutes. On top of Bono, the points, Bono. he's got four assists, three steals, two rebounds, and only one turnover. As the point guard, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'd say. And Bona back at the free throw line for a one and one. Missed the front end just a second ago. This one rolls out as well. Lit on the basket for both of these teams at the free throw line right now. Minute and a half left to play. UCLA up 12. For a chance to play Oregon in tomorrow's second round matchup, Jordan Pope fades away from inside the paint and hits. Cuts the lead to 10, 120 to play. Inbounds finds Stefanovic who crosses the timeline, gives it inside to Bona, who goes up and slams it home on a great transition play from UCLA to extend the lead back to 12. Yeah, I don't know if Mick Cronin liked that shot whatsoever by Bona, but that's pretty much the Emotional dagger as Oregon State's going to use their final timeout. It will be their final timeout, likely the final one of the season. Timeout. As Oregon, Oregon State, State takes a timeout, we'll take a quick break with them. This is Blaze Radio from Las Vegas. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest and the fastest growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NOL, and Olympic lacrosse. What's poppin'? My name is Jasmine Kabiri, and I'm the host of Blaze Radio show, Bop to K-Pop a show featuring trending K-pop songs with prominent artists like BTS, rappers like Jesse, and pop rock bands like The Rose. K-pop includes so many subgenres of music, so whether you're a fan or not, this show can still be for you. Tune in to Bop to K-pop on blazeradioonline.com on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. My name is Jasmine, and I'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, from the Bill Austin Radio Studio in downtown Phoenix, Blaze Radio presents Boxing vs. Everyone. Amen. 
Bruins trying to close out their first round matchup against the Beavers, up 12 with one minute and three seconds to go. UCLA trying to continue the success they've had in this tournament recently. They've made the title game in two, excuse me, in the past two tournaments in both 2022 and 23, losing both those title games to Tommy Lloyd's University of Arizona, but they have been pretty successful in this tournament and look like they're continuing that success here today. And, and you know, this is, I was really intrigued, I think, also by this match because we hadn't seen UCLA play on day one in this tournament. So we talked about earlier, I mean, since 2019, it was the last mm -hmm. time they played in day one in the first round, and they've been so accustomed to getting that, that bye to the quarter final round, mm -hmm. aka day two, that I was very intrigued to see how they would come out, how they would fare. I think it benefited them that they were the second game of the day. I think this would have been a lot more rough for them had they had to be that 12 o'clock local tip to start off day one when they haven't had to ever play on day one in recent memory. Oregon State loses the ball out of bounds off of the, excuse me, off of the inbound. So UCLA will have it. They'll have it side out right in front of the Oregon State bench in the backcourt. Oregon State playing the press. Bona on the far side. Stefanovic gets in and is immediately fouled. He's about as sure a thing as you could get. You'd bet your house on him. He's 87% from the free throw line. So this really just to increase that record of scoring 65 points in a game and improving that statistic as well. Stefanovic in this game, he'd been quiet for a majority of it until a couple of buckets down the stretch. He's got five points on two for five shooting, one for one from downtown. But he's done a lot of work on the boards. He's got eight rebounds and two assists. Two of those rebounds are offensive in 28 minutes of play as he hits the first free throw. I mean, he's been so solid. I mean, you know, guy who, you know, was, you know, a 10 and three guy last year at, at Utah, a key piece of their offense a season ago. Big time pickup for Mick Cronin's team, mm -hmm. give you a little more stability on both ends of the ball. Inside pass intended for Ibekwe was tipped out of bounds. It'll stay for on the Beavers end, 52.2 seconds remaining. 32 second difference between shot clock and game clock. Bruins up 13. Pope gets the inbound in the corner. Drives on Stefanovic. Dribbles back to the right to the baseline. Fades in, goes out. Cross court pass to the corner is no good on the three point shot. And Stefanovic will travel after the rebound to turn it back over. And right there, I mean, they just—they keep breathing life back into this Oregon State team. I, 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 it's probably too little too late at this point, down 13 with only 41 seconds left. But still, I mean, this has got to be so frustrating for Mick Cronin. Just to, he just wants to get out of this game at this mm -hmm. point. Just trying to get out of it and get his press conference done with him, prepare for Oregon tomorrow, which will be a tough matchup as Akanu fades away from right under the basket and hits it right outside the cylinder, making an 11-point game, and Oregon State continuing to foul. Will put Andrews at the line for a chance to increase that career high to 30. Five, yeah. Second person, and now you got 10, 10. two free throws coming up here, you know. Mm -hmm. and it's just, that was the 10th foul right there for Oregon State. So, game's done at this mm -hmm. point. Mick Cronin's going to a couple bench guys here as well. So, all about wrapped up, trying to keep everyone healthy then. No yep. last second freak injuries before you have to play. Oregon tomorrow, like you said. Andrews increases his career high to 30 points on the free throw. He's still got one to go. Andrews having a career day. Came in last season as a top 50 consensus prospect. He was a bench player playing behind Tiger Campbell last year, as most point guards in America would be. But, I mean, Cronin, when he recruited him, talked about how Andrews is – he quoted saying he was the fastest player he had ever coached in his 27 years of coaching as he increases the lead to 13 and gets 31 points as he checks out. And the Bruin faithful give him a standing O. An incredible performance from the sophomore. Arguably player of the tournament so far. Has the best game of his career, hears it from the bench. 29.5 remaining in the ball game. Just a little bit of window dressing left for this one. Oregon State will inbound it. Pope will bring it up, no shot clock. He'll dribble to his right, 
gets a switch, steps back, fires a three, and hits it on a nice between the legs step back. Pope, that's his third three of the ball game, doesn't mean too much. UCLA able to inbound, still a lot of pressure from Oregon State. No foul though as they send the cross court pass to the corner, 10 to go on the clock. And Lake will hound Stefanovic a little bit. Excuse me, that's not Stefanovic who just subbed out, but that'll just about do it for this one. UCLA is able to survive this first round matchup against Oregon State who gave him a game for a little bit. But behind Dylan Andrews, 31. And Adam Bona's 16 points. The Bruins are going to move on to face Oregon in round two tomorrow. Sloppy game from McCronin's team, but they buckled down. They got it done. That's what you got to do this time of year, especially in March. And now they get to go put a sticker on the bracket off to our right and prepare for a 2.30 p.m. game tomorrow with an Oregon team that has been on a roller coaster ride to get to that first round by matchup tomorrow. That 4-5 game is always a ton of five fun when we get to that 4-5 game. And I cannot wait for that game. It's going to be so much fun tomorrow. The game is good, definitely going to be competitive. We're going to take a little lengthy break here from Las Vegas as they change over the arena here at T-Mobile. But stick around for the two night games here in Las Vegas. First game will be the seventh seeded Cal against the 10th seeded Stanford. Jonah Krell and Kevin Malater will have that game. And then the final game, the nightcap of the first round, will be six-seeded Utah against 11-seeded Arizona State. I will be on the call with Jonah Krell for that one. For now, we'll see you later. Thank you for tuning in to the first round of the Pac-12 tournament. Tune in to Beyond the Cage on Thursday nights from 8.30 to 9 p.m. every single week to hear the newest on the fastest-growing sport in North America, lacrosse. The fastest game on two feet is constantly changing. With growth in the game each and every day, you don't want to miss out on the latest news about your new favorite sport. Listen as Sam Goodman and Kevin Cardaz take you through the half hour of the best and brightest within the NCAA, PLL, NOL, and Olympic lacrosse. 